So recently I was messing around and I pulled some of my mortal soul stones because there is a two times event of five and six star perfect souls going on. So I wanted to see where it would go and of course we do have the soul acquisition tournament as well. I'm curious what everybody thinks about these particular tournaments. I am not a huge fan because it always feels like the points that you are getting for a soul even if it's a good soul are incredibly low. So I think that these tournaments might need to be reworked a little bit, but I think these ones are probably targeting more so, obviously, Krakens, endgame players, whales, those sorts of things. So maybe I'm a little bit biased in that, who knows. I did manage to come in still and get myself a decent amount of like energy and stuff like that, so it's, it's definitely a nice bonus for the account, that's for sure. But while I was pulling those souls, I happened to get a 5-star soul for an epic champion that I am actually a pretty big fan of, but I haven't talked about here on the channel yet, and that is going to be... The day 240 login champion, which is Grush the Mangler. Now, Grush is a bit of an interesting champion because he does bring a decent kit to the table, but people rarely talk about him. And I think he's one of the few champions that has not been hard power crept out of the daily login champion. So let's go ahead and talk about him. First of all, 240 days in is probably a little bit late to be getting this guy in all honesty because you are going to be getting somebody like a Syl prior to him and Syl is basically just a better support champion in most cases. She's going to bring better crowd control and all that sort of stuff but this guy is still an incredibly solid champion so we're going to go ahead and take a look at his kit. His A1 attacks one enemy 75% chance of placing a leech on the target for two turns before attacking. You'll notice his damage is going to be based on defense as well which is quite nice. He has a very solid base defense at 1321. A2 attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance when booked of placing a decrease attack debuff or a decrease crit damage debuff for two turns, which is a bit interesting. It's weird to see it or there. It'd be cool if it was a both. And then his A3, which is one of his best skills, is attacks all enemies, places a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns, places an additional 7.5% continuous heal on all allies for one turn if at least one enemy is hit with a critical hit. This is a very nice skill because if you're attacking, especially wave-based content, you can almost guarantee that you're going to end up getting at least one enemy hit with a critical hit, even if it is a strong matchup against him. So if he's hitting into uh, champions that he's weak against, right? So the chances of getting weak hit on all five targets is incredibly low, I would say. He does also bring an aura of ally defense in faction crypts by 30 percent. So what makes this guy so good? Well, first of all, I couldn't have asked for a better booking on him because I was really only worried about the A3. I slammed in four books to him and they went straight to the A3. I didn't have to worry about this small library on his A2. He's bringing an insane amount of sustain for your team. So first of all, he has a leech on the A1 at a very good land rate. Leech is going to allow any of your champions when they're doing damage to heal for a portion of the damage dealt. So it's similar to a lifesteal set, for example. Then on his A2, he's bringing in an AoE with a decrease attack and or decrease crit damage, which is very interesting. So if you can get both of these buffs up, especially on a boss, they're going to be doing significantly des less damage to you. There's already only a 15% chance of them critting, but if their crit damage does less damage overall, that is going to help your team out significantly when it comes to survival. And then of course the A3 is definitely a very strong heal skill as well. So you're getting a 15% continuous heal just guaranteed and you're getting a 7.5% conditional. So I would recommend building this guy out with 100% crit rate. I do think that's a very good way to build him. It's a very solid way to build this champion. We are actually going to be doing a little damage test on him as well. So this is how I have him built out. He has 48,000 HP, a little bit low, debatably. He has 5,500 on the defense, almost 5,600 on the defense for a baseline epic champion. That is pretty insane. 245 on the speed, 100% crit rate, 259 on the crit damage, 300 accuracy. I'm not really worried about building this guy with accuracy because I'm not too, too worried about the debuffs he brings. This guy, when he gets used on my account, it is pretty much just in Faction Wars as a pseudo damage dealer as well as a survival champion. In case you're wondering, this is essentially the gear that came off my Harima. So if you're curious about how his build looks in a little bit more day-to-day -day use, these are going to be his stats. So 53k HP. 4700 defense, only 156 on the speed, 101 and 155 on the crit rate and crit damage respectively, and a little bit more accuracy with 309, but more importantly, a little bit more resistance. 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to throw my infographic up on screen here now for you guys to check out. The priority stats you're looking for on this guy are obviously HP and defense for survivability, then speed, crit rate, accuracy, and crit damage. Pretty much in that order is what I would recommend. You could fully just ignore any sort of accuracy requirements if you're not worried about his debuffs, and you could just lean super heavy into the damage dealing support champion as well. In terms of masteries, this is what I have on him right now, so he's not even fully mastered out, so keep that in mind when we run our damage test. He would be benefiting from something like a Helm Smasher, a Flawless Execution, of course. If you're running Support Tree, I would recommend probably the right-hand side, mainly because he doesn't really do any heals or anything like that on his own, and I would recommend that you get yourself into the Offense Tree. It is worth noting, though, that you might want counter-attack masteries on him if you're trying to benefit from his Leech on the A1, especially in wave-based content or those sorts of things. For a Blessing, I am running Cruelty on him. He is 5-star Awakened, so he's getting a bit of resistance and accuracy boosts there, as well as some crit damage, which is quite nice. And then, of course, 450 extra defense never hurt either. If you're not going to run him in Cruelty, what I would recommend if you are building him as a nuke champion, go ahead and run him in Crushing Rend as long as he is 6-star Awakened. Even the 5-star Awakening is not too too bad for this particular champion because you are getting the first two hits each round so if you're cycling between his aoe's he can do decent amounts of damage but it is just straight up better when you get to the six star awakening because you're ignoring one percent defense for every 10 levels so when you're running in some of the dungeons and stuff like that where you have level 240 level 300 champions you're ignoring 24 to 30 percent of their defense which is incredible and then if you combine that with something like your lethal set or your savage sets, that's how you're going to get to a 100% defense ignore pretty quickly. With those two alone and then a decreased defense, you're already ignoring 100% of defense, so that'll boost his damage incredibly high. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you could also run him with a couple of other blessings, which I'll go over real quick. So another callout would actually be Heaven Cast. So if I was running him in this and he had some buffs on him, and keep in mind he is placing his own buffs as well, he'd actually get 1.5% damage for each buff that he has placed. You could also run him inside something like Nature's Wrath, which is going to increase his damage by 3% for each debuff he places. He is bringing the Leech, of course, and he is bringing the decrease attack and crit damage on the A2. So if you have him built out with accuracy, a blessing like that could work quite well too. Let's go ahead. Let's hop into Dragons and give him the good old damage test. Let's go ahead and go against Normal here. I have completely forgotten what affinity he is. He is Spirit, so he's going to be weak against Stage 20. I don't know why, but I feel like I've been doing a lot of tests recently with champions that are Spirit, so they can't be tested on Stage 20, which is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is, I suppose. We're going to go ahead and bring him in. I'm going to check and see how fast he is here. So he is at 245. Now, I should also be able to pull in my Tatura for this damage test, I think. As long as my Tatura is still built, he will essentially have the speed to go first. I do also have a increased defense in the way of Alatreon, though, so I might use him as well. Again, as long as he's built, he should have the speed to go first, which he's not really built that fast. So let's go ahead. Let's see if I can find my Tatura. I never really use the search features anyways. Let's see how fast he is. He is plenty fast enough. The reason we're bringing him is because he has his increased defense there, of course. Although, I don't know why I did that, in all honesty, because I do now realize that I have Mithrala, and she just does it anyways. But you know what? We're going to leave that in the video, because uh, <laughs> why not? Uh, let's go ahead and see. I don't think I have, like, a, a defense in all battles aura, but let's take a look. I'm just going to go here. Defense in all battles. There it is. So we have Wixwell. We're basically just boosting up his damage as much as we possibly can here. And lastly, we are going to bring in somebody like our trusty Lydia to go ahead and place the decreased defense and weaken. So we're getting the increased defense from Mithrala. We're getting the Hex to go out there as well. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's hop in and see what this guy can do against stage 21 in Dragons. You've seen the stats that he has built out with. We definitely should be able to do some decent damage here. He does have very acceptable multipliers. They're around a 4 multiplier on both of his skills. So... Uh, let's just go ahead and A1 here. I don't want to do too, too much damage. And this is going to be essentially his big hit, one of these AoEs. So let's go ahead and test this. First hit we're going to do is the A2. Let's go ahead and see if it can smack. Boom. It actually did okay damage for a single hit defensive-based nuker. Uh, we did have pretty much perfect setup, and it did about 75k across the board. So you can very easily get a little bit of damage out of this champion, at least on his A2 so far. Let's go ahead and test out his A3 as well, just since that's what we're a little bit more interested in, I would say. We'll get that Hex out there. 
We'll get the decreased defense and weaken. Let's go ahead and just A1 here again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's go ahead and get the A3 to come in here as well and see what kind of damage we can do. Significantly better damage there. I think I, I think I've seen around 150k. That being said, this guy, he's not a nuke champion. He is strictly a support champion who can also do a little bit of damage. Again, he's not built out inside Helm, Smath Mat Helm Smasher or Flawless Execution. This guy is actually very, very good for supporting your team somewhere like Faction Wars if you're trying to push through that. Or, of course, if you do have a higher awakening for him, you can use him somewhere like City of Centranos very effectively as well. I hope this showcase helped you guys to figure out how you might want to build somebody like a Grush the Mangler. And let me know down in the comments below where you use him. If you use him, I'd be very excited to hear that. Thank you guys all so much for the support on the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.